Texan Global School, Axioms and Laws of Real Numbers, Multiplication. In this class, multiplication axioms of real numbers are analyzed. The examples will be focused only on whole numbers. The first axiom in the multiplication of real numbers that we will analyze is the closure law. This law indicates that the product of two real numbers will result in a real number. Let's look at an example. Performing the 2 by 3 operation, we will do the multiplication. We can create a figure with small squares. Each square represents one unit. We create tables so that they have two lines by three columns. This is the multiplication of 2 by 3, thus obtaining six units or six squares. We can also calculate the product of 2 times 3 by adding 3 times 2, or by adding 2 times 3. Either way, the result is 6. So, 2 times 3 equals 6. Analyzing the closure law, we can see that 2 and 3 are real numbers, and the result 6 of the product is also a real number. The commutative law indicates that the product of two numbers, a by b, is equivalent to multiplying b by a. Let's look at an example. Performing the 4 by 5 operation, we create tables so that they have 4 rows by 5 columns. This is the multiplication of 4 by 5, thus obtaining 20 units or 20 squares. We can also calculate the product of 4 by 5 by adding 5 times 4, or by adding 4 times 5. Either way, the result is 20. Therefore, 4 times 5 equals 20. Applying the commutative law, we will make the same product but inverting the factors as 5 by 4. We create tables so that they have 5 rows by 4 columns. This is the multiplication of 5 by 4, thus obtaining 20 units or 20 squares. We can also calculate the product of 5 by 4 by adding 4 times 5 or adding 5 times 4. In both ways, the result is 20. Then we conclude that 5 times 4 is 20. In this way, we verify that the commutative law is true since 4 times 5 and 5 times 4 results in 20. The associative law indicates that, given three real numbers, we can group two of those numbers with grouping symbols to multiply them, and that result is multiplied with the remaining number. Let's look at an example. When performing the 4 by 2 by 3 operation, we use the associative law first to multiply 4 by 2. We create tables so that they have 4 rows by 2 columns. This is the multiplication of 4 by 2 resulting in 8. Now, we multiply this result of 8 with the remaining factor 3. We also create the tables, thus obtaining 24. Also using the associative law, we can group in another way. Now we multiply 2 by 3. With the squares, we can see that the result is 6. Then, we multiply 6 with the remaining factor 4, obtaining the same result of 24. Finally, we group 4 by 3, and to the result we multiply 2, obtaining the same result of 24 units. As you can see, we can group and multiply the numbers as appropriate. In the end, the result will be the same. Hence, we conclude that the order of the factors does not alter the product. Another axiom indicates that there is one and only one element denoted as one, such that the product of this multiplicative neutral element with any real number results in the same real number. This axiom is called the existence and uniqueness of the multiplicative neutral element. In the example, we perform the operation of one by nine. When drawing the boxes, we can see that we have one row with nine columns resulting in the real number nine. In this way, we can see that if we multiply one with any other real number, it will always result the same real number. The last axiom of multiplication indicates that, for each real number a, there is one and only one element denoted by a to the negative one, or one over a, in such a way that when multiplying them, results in one. In this last example, we are asked to find the multiplicative inverse of four. As we can see, the multiplicative inverse of 4 must be a number that, when multiplying it, results in 1. The only number is a 1 fourth. To verify, we multiply 4 by 1 fourth. Remember that 4, as a whole number, by definition is divided by 1. Then, we have two fractions multiplied. Remember that to multiply two fractions, we multiply directly. So, it is 4 times 1 in the numerator and 1 times 4 in the denominator resulting in 4 quarters. 
which has simplified results in one. The diagram shows a circle separated into four parts. Each part is a quarter or one fourth. If we add the four quarters, we get one whole. This axiom is the basis of the division. Actually, what we do is multiply by the multiplicative inverse of a number. The last axiom that we will analyze is the distributive law. It is an axiom of connection between addition and multiplication. It indicates that for every number a, b, and c that belongs to the set of real numbers, the product between a real number with the sum of real numbers is equivalent to the sum of the products of each addend by that number. Let's look at an example. If we perform the operation of 2 by 3 plus 7, we apply the distributive law since we have two numbers added, which are multiplied by another. Then, we multiply 2 by 3 and 2 by 7. 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 times 7 is 14. Then, we add those values, resulting 20. One way to verify this operation is by adding 3 plus 7 and multiplying the result by 2. We can see that we obtain exactly the same result. Texan Global School Global Online Learning Knowledge for the World www.texanglobalschool.com